and what this will lead to. Under the agreement, Russia, Turkey and Iran will set up four de-escalation zones in Syria, mainly in rebel-held areas. The Turkish army will provide security and allow aid into these safe zones. The area has seen infighting between rival Syrian opposition groups for control. Now, for more on this, TRT World's editor-at-large, Ahmed al Burai joins me now. Thanks so much for joining me, Ahmed. Now, how is this different from the Euphrates shield that we saw? Euphrates shield started in 2016. And it was mainly to uh, clean the borders from Daesh affiliates. And Daesh has a unique uh, characteristic which is uh, difficult to deal with. That why uh, Turkey at that time uh, recruited a big number of uh, its army on the border and they themselves they were involved in the process uh, in addition to the YPG who were uh, planning to uh, fill the vacuum that Daesh may leave after they're dri uh, driven out of the uh, northern provinces of Syria now this time it's very similar the, the only difference we have is first, we have Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, which is the uh, affiliates of Al-Qaeda, and they're very similar to uh, Daesh. The hope is they're not going to uh, do the same as Daesh done. The second is less, the, the lesson that Turkey has driven from the Operation Euphrates Shield. They've known how to deal with these kind of elements on the ground. They, uh, in the uh, Al-Bab operation, Turkey uh, lost almost 70 to 80 soldiers, Turkish soldiers, in addition to the Free Syrian Army soldiers. So now they've learned the lesson in terms of the logistics in terms of the ground operation, when to use the uh, air force and when to use the artillery shelling and these stuff. They've also learned lots of lessons how to deal with the humanitarian crisis, how to set up humanitarian corridors for the, the people there. So, and the, the, uh, the most important point, it's not going to be the same scale, mm -hmm. but the, all the precautions are taken. The, the, the number of tanks, the number of the uh, military personnel that is being building up on the border crossing in uh, Kilis and Hatay and other uh, border cities, it does indicate that Turkey is uh, ready for any case scenario, whatever the scenario is going to be, the, the, they're ready on the ground. Now, Ahmed, you sound very optimistic there. You've talked about the lessons that Turkey learned and the precautions in place. But really, let's be you know, honest. What is the likelihood of this being a success this time around? We never know in warfare. Of course we never know, but again, as I told you, as far as the political will is on the table and these regional powers do have the, um, the decision, they, they've reached a, an ultimate a decision that we cannot go on with this. No one is going to win militarily, so it's either to have a win-win situation where the regional power do have a compromise on the Syrian uh, problem. Now, where is the problem is the people there, the people who lost their lives, the victims of this war. Do the international community, or let's leave the international community away, do these three powers consider the the pain of these pe the, the, these innocent people the loss they have the refugees the internally displaced people the killed people hundreds of thousands of people lost their lives so are they going to go back to the first square and as if nothing happened so they're questioning why did we start this kind of uprising why did we start this revolution at the end of the day the people are there the these regional power should find a way to satisfy their uh, sacrifices. If they uh, succeed to convince these moderate rebels, along with the uh, NGOs, with the people, with the civil society, that this kind of negotiation that is happening now in Astana, that might happen in other places, is going to achieve this role, then the people on the ground would be satisfied. Otherwise, the, even the people themselves, they cannot go for long with this. They've learned the lessons of many civil wars that should end up with negotiations. Let's talk about the people on the ground, the civilians, because here we have Russia involved. And there's been so many 
civilians who have lost their lives because of Russian airstrikes. How can we be sure that now in this operation they won't be targeting civilians that could happen that is one of the scenarios that might happen uh, russia is on board and it could intervene any time to help the free syrian army or to help turkey or to help the syrian uh, regime to take part of this region now the problem is do we have Turkey and Russia on the same page when it comes to this operation? Of course we do. The, the Russians agree on the Syrian's operation, but on the other hand, they do have their own calculations, their own calculus on the ground. They still need the regime to be empowered on the ground. The regime, the Syrian regime is going to take part of the city rather than Turkey and this free Syrian army. They do have the moderate free Syrian army rebels as partners, main opposition that could be a counterpart in any negotiation, but still they do have the, uh, the regime on the ground. Now, if they decide to attack and this co collateral damage or the civilians are lost and then the international media or whatever kind of propaganda start that Turkey is attacking, this could evolve. It's a snowball and we've left this before. And you have the black media that is going to start disseminating these kind of false news. Maybe this is going to change the whole image of the peace uh, keeping mission of Turkey. Turkey is telling them now that we are interested in complying, enforcing the uh, terms of the de-escalation zone. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the, the other paradox, it could not be a de-escalation. Things could escalate based on the role of these players on the ground. And let me ask you about a, another possible attack, the group Hayat al-Tahrir al-Sham. What if they attack the FSA? That is, that is a very uh, possible scenario. And they could even take the, the attack against Turkey. We don't know how these people, they may start attacking Turkey here. And we've seen this by Daesh and by the YPG terrorists. So the terror mentality is still the same. The way they act, the scenarios, the strategies they have, they know that Turkey, this is an extensional uh, 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 survival uh, paddle. It's, it's like a zero formula. It's either you be or you don't be. That's why the, you would find that they would do whatever they have in hand in order to push Turkey back. Because it seems on the table they're not negotiating. They're not listening to what Turkey is telling them. Even they're not trying to understand the population there. The people there, they are calling them to find any means any tool to speak politically because it's it's very clear that the military option is not going to bring them to power is not going to achieve them anything many of the stories in the whole region and even in afghanistan anywhere you will not gain anything if you go on with the military you don't have any other options on the table you will lose that's why i think uh, turkey it does consider this scenario. They may attack the Free Syrian Army in, in case this happened. Turkey is going to support them with the Air Force. But again, the Free Syrian Army is uh, well trained. We, we do not know exactly how these uh, elements, soldiers on the ground, will be able to deal with these affiliates of the uh, Hayat Tahrir Sham because they're highly trained. They know about the guerrilla war. They know about the region. Unlike the Free Syrian Army Forces, some of them, uh, they, they, they're not highly motivated. They, do not, they are not totally involved in the whole process. So they might be a vulnerable target to uh, the, the Hayat Tahrir Sham. The only option is Turkey uh, support and backup with the, uh, any other uh, scenario in case the uh, situation deteriorates. Do you think, Ahmed, that this could give rise to Turkey having, having losses here, having repercussions here in Turkey itself? This, this is a possible scenario, of course. 
this could happen depending on the power. Of course, Turkey is taking lots of precautious uh, measures on the border, trying to uh, prevent any kind of penetration of these element groups into Turkey. But the problem, you have many of them. You have uh, Turkey um, is an aim, is a target for Daesh from the one hand, for the YPG and the PKK, still it's ongoing battle. And now you have Hayat Tahrir al-Sham. And as I told you, the mentality of these uh, terrorist organizations are still the same. They would try to affect Turkey internally. And that's one of the most um, dangerous things because they know that the situation here um, Next year, we're going to have a presidential election or the, 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 in 2019. So they know the situation. They know the opposition and how the political things internally. They would try their best to create a turbulent uh, political situation here in Turkey. That's why today the, the main or the, one of the opposition party, the Nationalist Movement Party, uh, Mahapa or MHP, uh, declared the support. They totally support the, uh, the operation of Turkey inside uh, Syria, the same as recently we have the mandate uh, that has been issued in the parliament was a, agreed upon by all the opposition parties as well. So uh, Turkey is trying to build up the uh, internal uh, f a front, but on the other hand, they are ha they the, the terrorist organization are having uh, many plans to try to destabilize Turkey economically, politically. So, of course, w whatever precautions you have, you do not expect these kind of elements, how they infiltrate, how they penetrate the system. We've seen this last year and the year before. But with the, the new uh, policing issues, I think Turkey would try to prevent as much as they can. Ahmed, thank you so much for that analysis and insight. That's our editor at large, Ahmed Al-Burai. Now, let's take...